Greetings, pilgrims, and welcome to another episode of the Polygon Pilgrimage. And today I wanted to share with you something pretty exciting I've been working on for a while, and I think I've just about got it. This is a auto-randomizing floor tile. And the idea here is that each tile has some smarts built into it, and it will look at all of its neighbors. And then that tile will choose a variant that none of its neighbors have chosen. So in theory, we have these tiles that will automatically be unique amongst their neighbors based upon a given number of variants. Now for this example, I have created approximately 42, 43 variants, and uh, each one is based off of a set of modular tiles that are all built to work together. And then we have one texture, so one material that is uh, powering all of this. So I want to show you our example here, and I wanted to preface this with the fact that there is still a little bit of a bug in the system that it is choosing uh, incorrectly, and I can't quite figure it out. I've been working on this for several days, lots of researching, lots of asking questions as usual. So I wanted to show you what I have so far, and maybe as a community we can work together to fix it. So here's what we have so far, and even with it being in this not 100% state, it's still pretty good. So considering this entire room, all of these floors were placed procedurally as far as their variants are chosen. So if you walk around the room, you know, you get this really cool setup where, you know, the floor is kind of disturbed and broken, and even amongst tiles that are not broken, you can see here the top left of this guy is fine top left of this guy has some dirt or some wear and tear to it. So these are two different sections that are chosen and they're right next to each other. So even though we have kind of a quote unquote solid floor, it's a different variant from here to here. So you're getting that variety. Now another thing to take into account is my variants here are purpose made to be kind of extreme just to really showcase the effect and to really showcase the fact that it's working. So let's drop out of play mode here and let's take a look at what's going on. So as you can see here, we have a room full of perfectly nice floors for now until they all get randomized. So I'll drop out of game mode here and let's drop out of that so we can look at what we have. So essentially it's each floor is just a sort of a squished box here kind of shape. And I have, if I go through my secret wall here, I have a whole lineup of all the different variants. So you can see we have a full tile <clears throat> we have uh, these double sections that are kind of sunk in. We have a single section sunk in. We have two small pieces. And then we start to get to our um, quarters. So one quarter, two quarters, three quarters. And then there are seven different variants of each of those. So let me jump over to Maya quickly and I can show you what we're talking about. So here's Maya. And you can see we have our different floors. So each of the seven original variants and then plus one for just a solid dirt area. And then each of these guys has their own double, single, double, small, one quarter, two quarter, three quarter. So that allows us to have a, a huge amount of variety. And each of these, if you zoom in, you can see, let's take a look here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So even though these are both the same physical type, this one has these cracks on this tile and this one does not, and they're pulling from a different part of the same texture. So this will allow us to have a great amount of uh, variety with uh, pretty simple mechanics. So what I've done is I've exported each of these pieces. And what's important to note is that for this to work, for most tiling things to work, you have to take each piece. They have to have a very common pivot. So my pivot is the very top center of this face. And it's in the same position for each of these, even though they have different physical geometry. Then you take this guy and you have to zero him out. So I'm going to put him at 000, and then I export from there. So that way when he comes in, he has a centered pivot to the world. Because if you were to just have him here, even though his pivot is right here, when you export, the pivot inside of Unreal is going to be here at the center of the world. So that's something important to note, okay? So we're pretty much done with Maya now. And yes, you can see in the background here, I'm working on walls to do the same kind of thing for walls. And then here's just some sample things I was working on and some pieces here to help me generate these. So we don't need to worry about those, but this is our 43 pieces. I believe this is 42, and then this is a 43rd piece. So let's jump back to Unreal. Whoop. And now that we're here in Unreal, let's take a look at uh, how we create these pieces. You can see here when I, when I select it, it looks like there's two boxes being selected around it, and that's true. There is the box itself, and then there is a collision box so it can detect its neighbors. 
So if I bring up the uh, the actual blueprint piece here, you can see there he is. And we just start with uh, the floor A is that very first type, just a standard floor. And I've called this SK underscore floor A. Everything is going to be SK for a smart kit. Okay, because the idea is we're going to do a lot with this to make a really smart modular kit. So the SK underscore floor A is our standard piece, and we've attached our material. And then you'll notice here I have a variance variable, and this is an array. So if I click that, right now it's all collapsed, but you'll see I have 13 of the 40 so plugged in. So if I open this up, you'll notice that each of these is a, a mesh, and each of these meshes is our different variants. <clears throat> and the eagle-eyed among us will notice that, yes, I have put, uh, I've put different ones in here to kind of affect the randomness, if you will. So the first two are actually the same, floor A, because I want that to appear more often or be more likely to appear. Then we have C and D, E, F, G, and then we start to do 2A, 3A, 4A. I started to put in more of these solid variants because I wanted a more solid floor, <clears throat> pardon me, and then the floor dirt at the bottom. So this is what we're going to be pulling from. Okay, so now how do we determine what our neighbors are using? Well, that's what this uh, collision check. So this is a square collision. And if you look at it from the side, he's actually a little bit taller than each piece. And he's a little bit thicker as well. Just enough to kind of bump into our neighbors. And that's really all we need for that. It's just a little bit bigger. And if you want to follow along, our shape here is 4x4x0.5 four by four by and 32, 32, 32. And that's what I've got going on for the collision check. So now let's take a look at our event graph and figure out how the smarts work to it. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, on event begin play, I created this uh, I created this function here, and I don't really use it except to pass along. So we really could just kind of get rid of him. Uh, he could just flow through right to here. But essentially, on event begin play, we're going to go to our collision check and we're going to get all overlapping actors that are of an SK floors type. All right. So we're going to look at those and we're going to get that type. Then we're going to loop through all of those and I'm going to say, okay, for every single one of these things, tell me, get the mesh component, static mesh component. I, I just want a list of just the static meshes. Then I'm going to say, all right, let's loop through the static meshes and what I want to do here is I'm going to get a random integer between 0 and 12. And this is going to be choosing a random variant of our 13 that have been assigned. And I'm going to set that as a variable. <clears throat> Pardon me. So this variable is called hold random because we're going to hold that random value. Okay. And essentially, as I'm looping through here, I'm going to look at the index of the one that I'm on. And I'm going to compare it to my randomly selected variant. And I'm going to say, if these two are true, so if I randomly select five, okay, and while I'm looping through my uh, array index, I get to variant type five based upon its index, then I say, ah, you know what, that's true. So you see this line, it's kind of weird, because it's actually looping back on itself. So if it's true, go back into the loop again, and pick another one. Because we don't, so this will spawn another random integer from here. It'll it'll say, go here, set another random value. We want to pick again because that's already been selected. So only if this condition is not met, are we going to set the current static mesh of ourselves equal to, and we're going to get this value that we saved, and our variance, the ones that we selected earlier. See there, they all are. I'm going to say, okay, get the index, and you can see here, I can't quite point at it, but you see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to get the random variant that I chose, and that's what I'm putting in here as the new mesh. So the way this works is it says, you know, let's get all of our neighbors, let's loop through and figure out what all of their components are. And then with their components, I'm going to say, okay, let's loop through those and let's compare that to a random number I've picked. And if they match, well, pick again. That's no good. We want something that is unique. Okay? So that's basically it. That's that's all there is to it. It's not that complex, really. But uh, for some reason, it's not working 100% of the time. 
So if we go back, you'll see, let's see it in action. I'm going to start and stop a couple of times. Okay, so if we start, you can see here we have a new random setup. And we can walk around and we can investigate it. And I can see here that this looks like two of the same have been chosen. But it might not be because we look at very carefully at the tiles here. And this corner is different. This guy is different from this guy. So we know that that's okay. It's a little bit easier to tell with things like the dirt. See, here's a solid dirt panel. And then here's one and here's one. So that's three in a row. So that shouldn't be really if it's working 100% properly. But, you know, still it does give us a really nice randomization of the room. And if I stop it and then start again, it's different yet again. So the really cool thing about this is it's going to be different for every time you play. Now, you might run into something like this where those two do look pretty much identical. But they are technically different, I think. This, this corner guy looks different. So, you know, my examples are kind of severe. Your examples might be more like this where you do get, you know, cracks on one and not cracks on another and that kind of thing. So your examples, if they're more subtle, it won't be as noticeable. Part of the reason I made these so extreme is to purposely look for these problems so that we could start to solve them. And then you get some nice th things like this where you have a dirt here and then a three quarter next to like a quarter or a half over here and you get a nice kind of organic shape out of a couple of random pieces. So it's working out quite nicely in some areas and not so much in the other. But the nice part is that we do have the ability to randomize and it randomizes supposedly uh, intelligently. And if I go through my wall here, I can go right through because I don't have a collision. Here's just a layout again of all the different pieces and we can, you can look at these as a reference. So if you're trying to figure out if it's working, you know, you can look at the room and say, based upon that variant, do I see that piece over here? You know, that kind of thing. So it's a nice ability to jump back and forth if you're, uh, you know, still debugging it, which apparently I still am. <laughs> but I wanted to share with you guys what I had so far because it is, uh, it is pretty neat, even if it's not working 100% yet. And, you know, that's why it's a journey. We're constantly learning and growing and expanding new things. So next I'm going to be working on uh, also doing the walls. And the walls only have to look to their left and right immediate neighbor. So maybe that will be a little easier. But I'm going to use the same algorithm at first and see what happens. And then I have a really neat idea. Saved it in my uh, back pocket here for some uh, modular kit pieces that you can use to create basically an entire room with one piece that has lots of intelligence built into it. So that'll be coming up. So if you guys have ideas or if you have uh, things that you would like to see it do, please let me know because I'm interested in making sure that uh, you know anything that I build that can be useful for you, um, let me know if there's something in there that you need and I will do my best to kind of work, work it into it. So I'm excited for where it's going. It's uh, It's been difficult to figure it out, but I think I'm starting to see the fruits of the labor and I think that uh, I'm not far from, you know, it'll be one simple little thing that says, oh, you just change this and now it all it all works. And for anybody anybody asking, I did look into, I had previous versions of this where instead of using the index, I actually uh, looked at the actual element itself and did a comparison between those two and everything else was pretty much exactly the same and that didn't seem to be any better or worse. So I have, I have tried that and I, and I will correct this. I will move this over and just, we don't really need this guy because we're not using him. So again, if you guys have suggestions, ideas, let's see if we can figure it out together because I think that will be very exciting. And uh, as always, guys, uh, keep practicing, get better, and I'll see you next time as the pilgrimage continues.